Hello, and welcome to the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources GIS Informal Lecture Series. I am your host, Phil Miller, and today's topic will be layout and project configurations. And I wanted to discuss a couple of things on this. Some of it will be a recap from previous videos, so if you've seen those, please bear with me while we go over this. But one of the things that we've always had the capability of doing in GIS is having multiple maps. So as you can see, across the top here, I have quite a few different map layouts. And I've also got the maps uh, catalog folder expanded over on the right so that you can see there is way more, way there's many more maps than I have displayed currently here. And I'll show that in a second. But what each of these maps represent is some of the same settings, but slightly tweaked. And some of these display slightly different information, but this project represents the index map of all of our geologic maps for the state of New Mexico that the Bureau has published, as well as some additional information about maps published by the USGS. But each of these different maps, each of the different map views, has slightly different information that we're displaying. So this one is my main index figure that is specifically focused on the proposals that we make for the state map uh, a grant. The next one over is basically an index map of all of the maps, much like we see on the interactive web map, that the Bureau has published over the years. This one actually includes some of the non-24K scale data to it. Um, I also have a layout that is specific to the fact sheet that we use for various different purposes. So we can all see that these are all New Mexico. A lot of them have the same exact information. We can see that the green polygons between each of these three different map views do not change between them, but there is different information that pops up based off of which map we're working on. And the reason why I have this configured this way is all of these refer to the same data. So if you look at my layer files, I have a group layer file called main index fig. If I go to the 50K, main index fig. If I go to the main index, main index fig. Every single one of these layouts uses the same layer file. The layer file is just slightly adjusted for each of the different uh, purposes of this map. So this is meant to work as a single source for all of the index, for the catalog of geologic, for the di visual display of the catalog of geologic maps in New Mexico. So, and I'm going to briefly look at the different layouts that I have on here. So eight and a half by 11. Uh, I believe this is 58 by 58. We've also got a different uh, figure sized page layout. I've also got this project thumbnails layout that you can see has a little state of New Mexico in the upper right hand corner. That is a supplement to my figure layout. And the reason why I do this is, uh, oops, this project thumbnail happens on the starter page of the proposal, whereas this is a figures page of the proposal, but we have it to where it's keyed to a specific location. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that thumbnails map so that you can see now we've rolled in another map and we can see a lot of the same elements are in here that are in other layouts. So if I come down here, I do have a project polys uh, uh, layer in this map layout as well as the project thumbnails map laid out, but they're displayed slightly differently. So I used the same layer, but I adjusted the settings in this map view, this map view, <laughs> specifically for the purpose of making my project thumbnails that references each of the projects that are in this eight and a half by 11 layout. So we're talking about the maps again, specifically to get to the point to where we could talk about layouts. But fundamentally, there are multiple maps. And then I'm going to go ahead and I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this now. You're going to see that I have two ARC Pro projects open. I like to live dangerously. My recommendation is that you do not do this. This can create problems. For the purpose of this video, that's the reason why I'm doing it. And when Arc Pro crashes on me, you can all point and laugh and say, haha, Phil told us so. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to another project. Again, I don't recommend doing this, but 
what we have here is we've got three different map views again that a display similar information between two of them and oops and i'm zoomed way in so that you can't really tell uh, but these two contain very similar information and then there's a third map view that displays the geology of the area so each of these different map views represents different sets of data that are very similar. So again, like our other uh, index map example project, we have a couple different maps and a couple different layouts. So I wanted to talk about this because we're gonna bounce back and forth between these two projects so that you can see some of the different ways that we can set up and configure layouts. So let's switch now back to the layout view. So each of the maps has, as we showed, similar layer files in them. And what I've done in each of the different layouts is use the maps to help me define what is displayed in each of the layouts. So as we saw, the main index map is tied to my main index figure. And this is an eight and a half by 11 displaying a lot of the same information. But in this map, I configured this to be very specific for the scale of information that we're displaying on this figure. Um, in previous versions of ArcGIS, we've always had the ability to have multiple data frames. We've never had the ability to have multiple layouts. So this is the reason why we're going into this discussion is to view the fact that we have multiple layouts now at our disposal and if we open up in the mini catalog the layouts folder we can see each of those layouts displayed to us if you want to create a new layout you would right click and click new layout i'll get to that in a second but i more want to uh, finish with the introduction of discussing each of these before we continue to that part of this discussion one of the other things that we have always been able to do in ArcMap in previous versions of ArcGIS is display in one layout multiple map frames or now in ArcPro map views. So you can see that this layout has four different map views in there. And that's the reason why you're seeing more than the projects that I have open is there is this map view in the layout is referencing the 100k indicator map view uh, data frame for lack of a better discussion that is this information so we can see how our layouts can get fairly complex and complicated but we have them now in my opinion a more organized manner in ArcGIS Pro in the fact that we can physically see these and also we can add them in at any time so if I wanted to go ahead and add the thumbnail I'm just doing this as an example my thumbnail map to this data frame what I'd want to do is come to insert a new map frame I would need to find my index thumbnails click on it, snap to my box, draw the box that I want, add in that frame. In that frame now, I would want to zoom to the specific layer that contains the data footprint extent. And now I've got that map frame as configured map view, sorry, I've got that map view as configured in this map view here on my layout as its own individual map view on my layout. So we can see that we can do lots of configuration to the layouts beforehand to utilize these resources in very um, uh, dynamic ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Um, let's go now to talk about, so we've talked about multiple views, multiple map views in a single layout. I'm going to go ahead and go to the deliverables uh, uh, project that AMP uh, has me fortunately working on. Thank you very, very much for supplying this. It's a great example of another function that we have in our layouts. So currently I am switching to the base map layout. And in this layout, 
we are showcasing, uh, AMP is showcasing some very specific study areas of research that they are working on. The part that's nice about this is there are multiple of these research areas. In ARC Pro, so sorry, in ARC Map, we have always had the ability to do data driven pages. So if you've ever worked with data driven pages, you're going to be familiar with this function. The comment now is it's no longer called data driven pages, it is called map series. So in this layout, I have a single map frame, map view, but I have the ability to configure a map series. So in my contents, when you're in layout view, if you have a map series set up, you have the ability to view the map series pages. So currently I have seven different pages in this layout. So currently we're looking at Galisteo. If I double click on the Borrego Arroyo page, the map view layout stays the same, but the map view switches to the Borrego Arroyo study area. So very quickly we can jump through and in one layout have all of the settings configured in our uh, map view that we want to display in each of the pages of our layout that we want to display. We can see that there's multiple configurations in here and I have set up each of these layouts. I've designed three different layouts that are using the same feature class to build a map series. So I can go to the geology of Galisteo Arroyo which is slightly different than the base map of Galisteo Arroyo, but it's the same area. So we can see that our footprint for Galisteo is still the same, but in this map view, I'm showing the geology. In the base map Galisteo Arroyo map view, I am displaying the base map information of Galisteo Arroyo, and we can see that same footprint. And if I jump between these two, you can now see the two of them showcasing and highlighting the same information. As well as, I have that same footprint, but with the results of the analysis that they've been conducting. So we can see all three of these now are the same layout size, same map frame size. The legend is dynamic based off of the data that's in each of these layouts but we can showcase the same areas and then also switch between the different pages of data to highlight the different information and then export these as needed. Or we can go ahead and make a PDF of all of these that compiles them all together in their own individual pages. I think I said this, so I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. This, this map series is using the footprint of their study area, the physical feature, the polygon feature to set up each of these, uh, I almost said data-driven pages, these map series pages, which is one way of configuring a map series. The other way we have uh, a map series configured is I have these configured based off of bookmarks. So if I come over here, oops, oh, right. This is the preliminary one. Shoot, I goofed up. Um, this one will ultimately be configured off of bookmarks where I can come to my bookmarks and select the different bookmarks that I have to switch between the different views. So, sorry, this isn't driven, uh, this isn't configured yet for the uh, map series, but I have all of the bookmarks set up so that when I'm on my uh, project area, I can switch between the Northern Rift. When I'm on the statewide geology, I can switch to my Northern Rift. And when I'm on this data frame, it's that one, sorry, this one, I can switch to my Northern Rift frame as well. So we can see how these update dynamically based off of a couple of different settings. This one is pre, I did all of this work 
to configure this set up for a map series based off of the bookmarks. And I thought I had done that. I haven't completed that yet. Uh, this project is not completely done. And the index uh, map itself is a work in progress as I'm trying to work on making a universal resource for everyone to have access to. So uh, at some point, I will inform everyone when this is live so that anyone in the building can go ahead and access this information to find out the status of various projects. Um, so sorry, I misspoke on that. But this is another way of displaying multiple locations using bookmarks instead of map frames. Uh, map series. You can convert the map series to use either a polygon, a bookmark, uh, thematic. Define a series of pages that span a range of map themes. So you can see that this is already ready to accept my bookmarks because I've already got my bookmarks configured. Uh, because I wasn't planning on doing this, I was planning on showing this done. I'm not going to go into setting this up, but I did want you to see the ability to go ahead and set up map series. It's very, very convenient. And I hope that this allows you to uh, see the potential possibilities for various projects. So that's why I wanted to talk about this more as a project configuration setup. So small p project, uh, not big p arc pro project. Yes, they're interrelated. So with this one, this represents the index project. Everything that I could need, even down to the fact sheet that references a specific set of information is saved in this ARC Pro project. The deliverables example, this is a project's specific set of figures that are required in order to show the results of the work and also generate the figures that will accompany the report that talks about the results of this little p project and little p project i mean the the grant project not the arc pro capital p project and i i know that's arbitrary and i called the capital p arc pro project because we're talking about arc pro um, so that's what I'm uh, discussing when I mean capital P versus little lowercase p. Okay, so that is what I wanted to cover for the most part with regard to the different ways we can configure projects. Multiple layouts, sorry, a same layout displaying multiple map views or various different sizes and types of layouts with multiple map views again. So the, the same thing that has been consistent in all of the ArcGIS software is multiple maps. Now we have the ability to add multiple layouts. So are there any questions on this configuration, on the different, uh, on the ability to have multiple layouts and or the ability to have multiple maps. I, I have a question, Phil, about the um, the deliverables example where you're using the feature to define the map. And is I know it's kind of saying um, you're saying center my map on this particular feature. You don't, do we have ability, like Galisteo was a good example, actually, that you were on, where in your, in one of those, the legend kind of covers some of that data, and I'd actually wish to scooch it over some, is that now it's kind of locked in because of the way it's, it's building the maps? Can I, can I tinker with it afterwards, or am I locked into to this you, precisely? You are locked into that footprint. Okay. And the example that I'm going to discuss with you, and this is something that this is an opportunity to discuss this with you that I wasn't planning on. I was planning on when I was working on these layouts. For example, this legend is too tight to here, but yeah. it would fit much better over here. I was going to make that judgment call when I exported okay. these to AI and move these where they were better off located to fit this in the view. Okay, that, that makes sense. I was just curious if there was any 
any other way to tweak that as you were going? But... Absolutely. That is okay. one option. Okay. The other option I'm going to highlight is this Belen highlight. So we can see that the map scale for this one is set to 55,000. One to 55,000. And I'm going to jump back to Galisteo really quick, and we're going to see that its scale is 5,000. So uh -huh. uh, you provided me this uh, map series configured. I went and adjusted it slightly. So that's another way that we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show. So you're going to have to give me a second while I go ahead and look up the site buffer. I think that was the one I did it in. There it is. That would make sense. So in the site buffer, I added a field. I don't remember if I added this or this was already in there. But the field for display scale, I configured in the map series to use this field to specify what the display scale was. So that then tweaks it. So that would be another way, like in Galisteo, we could go ahead and make this one to uh, 55,000 like the Belen one is, or 60,000 to display that better. So let's go ahead and do that really quick because I have the ability to do this live. Now it's set to a scale of 60,000. You can see that it's processing an update in the table row, reviewing the settings that it has to apply to to the display scale of the map series. And if I move this over now, and switch to the base map and come to Galisteo Arroyo, double click on it. It's, oh, it was already on Galisteo. It is now displaying 60,000 and we'll see that the extent changed based off of that adjustment. So if you really did want to make this be a different scale, that's one thing. If you want to shift the location, that's why we need to use bookmarks instead. Okay. So that would be the reason why and the rationale behind using a feature versus a bookmark. Because the bookmark will go to the extent of the bookmark specifically versus a physical feature. Then it's keyed into the feature. And then in the – and I was looking for my map-driven – Map series. So in the map series tab, you have the ability to set it to a specific scale or set it to a field to use to read what that field's entry is for the scale. And sorry, this may take a little bit to get set up, but. Um, so did you create that field with the scale that you were just modifying? You added yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. And I couldn't remember if you had it in there already or I added it in. I thought I had added it in, and I felt bad saying that. As soon as I said it, I was like, wait, was it in there or was it not in there? I don't remember. But I tend, when I'm using features, I absolutely use a scale because, like, when our project areas, those vary in scale dramatically. And those I used the bookmark specifically because I, of where I wanted things to be in relation to the map frame itself. So two options, and you now see, and that thank you for asking this question, that is why you would want to make a decision whether to use bookmarks or to use the features in a feature class. Um, thank you. So in optional fields, when we're looking at the setup of it, we can set a specific rotation. Uh, we can set a, a reference spatial references. What I have this operating on is use the scale from a field that is the display field, or you can center and maintain on a scale. This will operate on all of the features. This will use the features specific display scale, or you can do another option would be a best fit extent using the feature classes that would then allow you to specify your margins and allow it to then scale based off of that but we're talking about scale again so in that circumstance again it'd probably be better to do the bookmarks instead of the scale i was going to remedy that by dealing with the legends themselves because i was knew i was going to ai and i could see that there was areas and i forget which one it was i think it was galisteo and I don't remember the other one. 
specifically, I looked at that and I was like, I'm going to move the legend. It'll the legend fits over here versus over here. But the data driven page, mm, the uh, map series, the map series, you don't have control over where that legend is in the map series. It is set to make them all look exactly the same snapshot to snapshot. There's goods and bads to that. They will all look the same. But it doesn't take into consideration the human effect of cartography. And this is why I still like having the ability to export these to AI and do the human touch to them. Because I do. I don't remember which map it was. It covers part of the river. And I was like, the legend. Sorry, the legend covers part of the river. And I was like, oh, that's horrible. It could look so much better if we put it. And I don't remember where. But maybe it's this one. But there's one of these where that legend. Yeah, this one. Look at all of this space over here that, okay, it's desert, and I, I don't mean to like poo-poo the desert because I love the desert, but it would be so much better for this smaller legend to be over here, and then you could still see the water resources, which is what this project is talking about, so we might as well let the river be displayed, so I was manually going to move this in the AI file to this location for this figure specifically. Hi, Phil. On that note, um, I think for the results, I'm going to come back through and draw some groundwater full lines on the result map. Mm -hmm. Could you just leave me a little bit of space to put an arrow and then name it in the legend? It, that is so easy to do in the AI files. I'm not going to leave the space because I can't leave the space without doing some very weird things. But in AI, and I'm not going to open the AI project and show you, but in the AI, you can just open the AI project, grab this box, drag it down a little bit, and then you've got the ability to add your legend entry in there and then draw your arrows on there, just like you would be drawing the uh, arrows in the uh, map view in AI itself. So... So the export to AI contains the stuff that's hidden behind these objects then? Absolutely. Yeah, because if I move the legend, it exists here. It doesn't get rid of that. Okay. Awesome. That information is still underneath here. Absolutely. And if you want, I can show you all of that. That wasn't supposed to be part of this. Although it is an awesome segue to next week. I'm planning on talking about AIX which okay. is the process of converting an ARC project to Illustrator. So that'll be next week's topic. So Ethan, Layla, thank you so much for introducing next week's topic. Um, <laughs> but seriously, that was the plan. I am so thrilled that this happened to work out that way. But yeah, there's a lot of discussion that needs to happen with that to make that work. But it does. it's a great segue and precursor discussion for exporting your projects to AI and being able to do these uh, adjustments and modifications. The data is there. The data will always be there. And all of these elements move in AI exactly like they move in ARC. It's, it's so beautiful. I love this functionality enormously because the minor adjustments that I make in AI, this is not to poo-poo ARC too bad, but their cartography is clunky. In AI, I can do cartography so much quicker and so much more reliably and with absolute control. Ethan, your comment about uh, requesting this to be a little bit bigger, that is such a pain in the butt to do in ARC, and it takes three seconds to do an Illustrator. So that's the reason why I leave those things. I leave Illustrator things for Illustrator, and I do the bulk setup of ARC in ARC. I think there's going to be a very important phase of how to correctly export from ARC because we've done it in the past and horribly messed things up. So I, I look forward to knowing what, what buttons you're supposed to click. So I'll, I'll do a quick teaser for next week's lecture. Okay. How many figures are here in these three layouts? The, I counted 12, right? Yeah, something like that. That means in order to get this exported to AI, there are 42 exports that I have to composite together. And the reason why is because images and vector files are handled differently in ArcMap when they export to AI. If you have both rasters and vectors turned on simultaneously, you lose all of the control that you're exporting to AI for. So what you have to do is export the vector files 
turn off the vector files and then export the raster files. And then there's a function in Adobe Illustrator called paste in place. It takes all of 10 seconds to do. You copy the raster, you paste it into your vector file, and now everything is control shift V is the hotkey. It pastes in place those two things. You don't have to register them. You don't have to line up. They paste in the correct location. And now you've got your composite file to make whatever you need. So I'm going to take these 12 figures, go to AI. I have to export the 42 because all of the different components that I need for each of them, composite them together back into the 12 figures, and then we're all set to go. Sorry, 21, 21 figures, yeah. 21 figures. Yeah. Two times, don't trust me with math. <laughs> We struggled with that in a couple of them. We exported them wrong and you couldn't edit it how you wanted to in AI. <laughs> I have been doing this now, unfortunately, for 15 years. And this was one of the very first things that I saw in ARC that has always been true. You have to, if you want to edit in AI, you have to export your rasters in a completely separate export from your vectors must be done just must be done and then you have absolute control over those so thank you for that teaser so now we will progress on to what it means to add in a new layout so at the most basic information you almost always start with a map view and we can see that in here we're on the map view and very similar to inserting a new map view, inserting a new data frame, insert is still that functionality. So we insert and we have the ability to add a new map or a new layout. So I don't wanna do this here because I wanna use this for a very specific demonstration, but it's the same for my main index figure. I have a new layout and a new map view. So. Let's say I have this layout, which is roughly 58 by 58. I've got an eight, and a, I've got an eight by 10 and a half, and there's very specific reasons why I use eight by 10 and a half. My project thumbnail is eight and a half by 11, and it's because I need to go to the very edge of my page in order to get that uh, display. And then I've got an eight and a half by 11 fact sheet. What if we were setting up a poster now that needed to be 36 by 48, and we needed to contain this information on half of that layout, and the other half of the layout was going to be a bunch of discussion about what the state map program is. So we sounds to me like we need a new layout, right? We need a new page size, because this is 58, this is 8.5 by 11, this is 8.5 by 11, this is 8.5 by 11. We don't have another layout. So what we want is another layout. So I'm going to go ahead and specify a new layout. And when I click the drop down, it pulls up a list of all of the different things that we could possibly need. I'm going to go ahead and notice we have our architectural E, 36 by 48. Very, very common poster size. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. When I add, when I add this layout, if I come to my catalog, we'll see that we now have a new layout one. Oops, I should have renamed things. I'm going to call this NMGS Spring Meeting State Map Poster. So now I have a new layout. And we know that we absolutely want to use this main index figure that has the state map project areas outlined as well as all of the maps that have completed, not just the um, state map prod, state, the index of the geologic maps that the Bureau has produced. So this is a key thing now of paying attention to what we want in here. So if I come to my main index, this is the one we want to display on my NMJS spring meeting poster. Now you can see that this is getting a little unwieldy to deal with, right? If we close these out, we don't lose them. They're still here. I can pull them back at a moment's notice if I need them. So don't be afraid to go ahead and close out your layouts if you're not actively using them. It cleans up the function quite a bit, and you can always, 
get right back to that configuration file, that configuration layout in a moment's notice because they exist here. So I've now got my new blank layout. I want to add in a map frame. And we said that we wanted the main index. So I'm going to click the drop down because I've got multiple map views. I need to find the correct map view that I'm looking for. And we said we want the main index. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to look for my main index sheet. And I've got one that's specified to be one to 300,000. I know that will not, oh, I'm not sure. Let me rephrase that. I'm not sure if my one to 300,000 will fit, but I've got these two at my disposal that represent two different extents of the data. I'm going to go ahead and click that one. Let's live dangerously. And then I'm going to pick my location. I'm going to drag a box and I want roughly half of this to be my New Mexico index map. I drag the box. It takes a little bit to display the information. We can see that it's drawing. And now here it is. And it's at one to 300,000. So this page size is not conducive to a one to 300,000 scale. So we can go ahead and adjust the different scales based off of what we, ooh, why did I do that? Oh, that was 3 million, 3 million. See, don't trust me with numbers. Why does everyone trust me with numbers? So now we can see that at one to 100,000, we're getting close. We could probably do some things where we could put some heading information down here, or we could put a title across the top, get our map displayed, have an explanation of what the state map program is, and then go ahead and display any other information that we needed over here. I could go ahead and insert... Um, Let's do the statewide geology as another map. And we can see as we add the map frames to the layout, they show up in the table of contents. I should have picked a different frame because this is going to take a long time to draw. Um, but that is how we make new layouts. It is insert new layout. The other thing that we can do is new layout you can import a layout file from a different location so if you've already got a layout that's configured and you from another pro project capital p pro project that you want to add into this project because it's for a different grant and you're going to have to submit this project as part of the deliverables from the grant you can add a different layout from a different project so uh, we can import a layout file. We can also do a custom page size so that we can specify what our layout needs to be. What if your poster presentation, they said it can be 36 by 82? Well, you can go ahead and specify that we want the width to be 82 inches by 36 inches tall. I click OK. I now have that layout ready to go. And I can go ahead and add in whatever map frames that I needed to add to this layout and then add any legend items that I need and any text boxes, any disclaimers, any titles, any authors, any affiliations, any use limitations, whatever you need to add to your layout. So that is one methodology for making layouts. Uh, I think that would satisfy probably 80% of people's needs. More often than not, you know what you want to be. It's more than likely going to be a page size layout or a half page layout or whatever the case may be. So that half page layout would be another discussion. We could do custom page size. And instead of being eight and a half by 11, we can do 5.5. And now we have a half page layout for our figure. Very easy to do. And then we can configure again, whatever we need to set up and configure for uh, our specific figure. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to discuss, and that is back in the deliverables. We have our layout right here. We've got multiple of them. 
These were for different purposes. These were test uh, samples in time. We know that this base map is already my half page layout. What if I want to duplicate the half page layout, but I want it, uh, I want a different map frame in there. And that's how I created these. I had a specific one that I was already starting with, and I wanted to switch to a different map frame. So I'm gonna show that example because there will be times where this will be convenient as well. We already had our three different map views set up. Let's pretend that the results didn't exist, for example. I have my results map view. I do not have my results layout. So pretend that doesn't exist. I'm gonna start with my base map layout. I can duplicate this base map layout because it represents the size I want and a default configuration for the information I want on there. I can right click on the base map and I can say duplicate. When I click duplicate, it makes a duplicate copy of the base map and I think it'll call it base map one. So there's my base map one. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to results test, for example. So now I am looking at, oops, not yet. I am now looking at my results test. We'll see that the map frame comes in with the base map because that is the specific template layout that I started with and duplicated. If I right click and come to properties, I can specify, oops, where is it? There it is, in the map series. This is little case map series, not setting up a map series. We can see that the map frame that it is referencing is the base map. If I want to, I, I'm in the wrong place somewhere, I guess. Where is that? Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Sorry, I right clicked on the map frame that was active or in here or the map frame that I wanted to change. Right click, went to properties. Over here, I now have the ability to select any of the map frames that already exist in my project, capital P project, that allows me to switch to that map frame. And then we then see the map frame change to the specific map frame in the layout. And we see that my legend update updated to reflect that change. I should have picked an absolutely different one because this is just pure chaos in here. Um, this was the temporary placeholder for getting all of the different NAIP data sets added in uh, so that I could use them for the specific project. So we'll do something silly and we'll do that. Um, so that was taking an existing map frame that already had things configured the way I wanted them to be configured and allowed me to specify using that map frame, which, sorry, using that layout, which map frame I wanted to reference in this new layout. That covered all of the different topics that I wanted to touch on for this presentation. I hope that you found this helpful and useful. I would definitely like to thank all of you for participating and thank you for the questions. This is what makes this very awesome and interesting. Thank you for letting me do the precursor for uh, next week's presentation. And I want to thank the GIS Services Program for allowing me to do this and Mike Timmons for allowing me to do this as well. And we will see you in the next session next week. Thank you all for participating.